Games Workshop have blessed us with a new Warhammer The Old World article and this time it's focusing on Tomb Kings. Now I don't want to get your hopes too high because when it comes to details about the actual game there's not much here. Again it's talking mainly about the lore which is not something I'm particularly knowledgeable about so just keep that in mind. If we jump in though we can see that it's Old World Development Diary Walk Like a Nehekaran in the Land of the Dead. So this one's all about Tomb Kings. They talk about how the previous one was all about Empire and how it wasn't like the United Nation that we knew. However, this one is obviously focusing about Tomb Kings and you can see here the artwork. I have to say, I think it's pretty damn nice. Every artwork that they produce regarding the old world, I'm personally a huge fan of. Like, I don't think there's anything I've looked at and been like, I don't really like that. I'm mainly into the aesthetic of the old world rather than say like the law. So just keep that in mind. Like don't go thinking I know what I'm talking about because I don't. They do say that the empire is different from what we know but the Tomb King's pretty much familiar. It's led by the tyrannical rule of Sceptre the Imperishable, and he's the King of Kemri, and it says the Supreme Monarch of the Nehekara and the other Tomb Kings are going to be major players in the stories we tell about Warhammer the Old World. To me, this could be setting up a Tomb Kings box. We spoke about it before, the rumours are out there, we know that they've been being play tested as well, like it would make sense. On one hand it sort of sounded like it was going to be Empire versus Chaos when we listened to the last article, and then this one sounds like it could be Tomb Kings versus Bretonians. Maybe we're getting two boxes, because this is what this inevitably sort of sounds like to my mind. Now it says they're not technically citizens of the old world, because they have their own map. I do not know the locations of things well enough to really digest this map if you're aware of any like interesting details do let me know but it looks like you know the area of the land of the dead but it does talk about how his legions marched across the deserts and the mountains until they reached the distant coast and to the north his dominion included the lands known as the empire and bretonia specifically calling out bretonia there i see i mean to be fair that is where they are geographically but i just find it interesting that it's sort of matching up with some of the rumors we heard about the corsets i'm getting weirdly more and more convinced that we might get two corsets sets which doesn't seem believable but maybe it is going to happen. There's some law details here talking about how his rule was diminished and stuff like that but it does say that Setra has been plotting the reconquest of the lands that were once his and the subjugation of the usurper kings, queens and emperors who dare rule in his stead. No doubt we will see these plans of conquest set into motion when the time is right. And then this next question is sort of interesting because it says can you give us any clues about how they actually will wage the war? A key statement that they say here is that they want the rules presented to be balanced of course but they also want to involve the image of rank upon rank of undead skeleton warriors so you're going to see a horde army here if you want to you're going to be able to just field an absolute shed ton of skeletons classic style but of course you're going to be able to have your chariots if you want the speed and you're going to be able to have your monstrous constructs riding beside you or walking beside you or whatever they're doing beside you and then we pretty much knew that this rule would come back in some way but you will to wield the powers of the lich priest once more commanding skeletal hordes to arise and they sort of like highlight arise which i'm guessing might end up being a keyword rule or something like that from their tombs and march upon the lands of the living another bit of artwork which again i think is looking pretty damn nice and then this next question is talking about why sector is off you know gallivanting around the world what will happen with the land of the dead and they basically say their main focus is to just concentrate on him going into the old world but that there's nothing stopping them in the future to go back to the nekara and actually engage with some of the story there so if they are in the box set it sounds like it's going to be a like conquesting like a marching band and the story's probably going to be set with them marching away from the tomb king area but they're not ruling out the possibility that they might end up going back there in the past. For me, it's interesting that they're putting this much focus on Tomb Kings. There was a period, and I'm not sure if it was just before 8th edition, but like from, I don't think they got like a 7th edition army book. Maybe I'm wrong there. Maybe somebody can correct me. But it felt like for a while, the Tomb Kings were slightly neglected, but then they did get an 8th edition army book. But I never really played that much of 8th. But to be fair, I never really played much of 8th because I heard the rumors of the end times. And I think it was just not a time in my life where I could actually play the game that much. So I never really concentrated on the game all too much so maybe they weren't as neglected as I imagined or envisioned. Either way it's nice to see Tomb Kings being put effectively front and center. Considering that the Empire is supposed to be fighting chaos it definitely sounds like they're setting up a situation where Bretonians are fighting Tomb Kings or maybe that's not actually going to be tied to the box sets but they just sort of want to do these kind of like stories and I'm all for it like it sounds really good. It's also interesting that this is the second article this year. Now why that's important is that's definitely an increase in frequency in my mind. Generally the articles have been spread out like several over several months right you maybe you got one in february then you got one in november but we've now literally got one in january and in february are they ramping it up for this year's release 
possibly some people say no some people say maybe it's games workshop i'm not sure we'll ever know exactly what they're doing until it gets leaked and rumored all over the internet but let's wait till that moment let me know your thoughts about this article did i miss anything super important as i said i'm not really a law guy i really like the aesthetic of the game i'm not really that bothered about the story of the game however i do mean to at some point to maybe get back into it maybe i'll just keep up to date with all the law stuff that they do regarding these articles because i find this a little bit easy to digest maybe than like full-blown books but yeah, just to let you know, that's my position on it. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. If you want to help me and support the channel, then becoming a Patreon is the best way. There is a link in the description. What you should definitely do though, is our most beautiful day. Like and subscribe. Goodbye.